In today's video, I want to discuss the five sample libraries that have changed my life. And by changing my life, I mean that they have impacted my composition process in such a way that they've had an immediate impact on the quality of the music that I could write, they've helped me to better generate and express my ideas, and they have enhanced the overall sound of my compositions from one day to the next. You could see these as recommendations. If you have a gap in your arsenal that you're looking for a solution for, I hope one of these libraries will help you to become a better composer. I want to start off with one that is a bit of a nostalgic one for me and one that I still have a physical copy of. East West Complete Composers Collection. I was in high school and at one time I went to an open day of one of the conservatories in the Netherlands that have a film music program. And when I played in my music, the feedback was the music is great, but it sounds terrible, which is fair because I was writing music in Finale at the time. The Complete Composers Collection was my first one-stop shop where I finally had a full orchestra at my fingertips that I could use to compose and produce orchestral music. It came with about a thousand CDs and it took me three days to install everything. I have upgraded everything ever since, but this library still holds a dear place in my heart since it's the first one that I ever bought. And while I believe this is no longer available, the good thing is if you are a beginner and looking into producing orchestral music, a great place to start is East West Composer Cloud. For about 20 to 25 bucks a month, you have access to their complete library of virtual instruments that you can use to start writing orchestral music that sounds great. I love writing choir parts, but very often oohs and ahs just don't really do it for me. While they can be great at times, what I love about choir music is how the texture of the sound constantly changes when the choir is changing the words that they are singing. This has frustrated me endlessly until I bought 8 Dio's in Solidus. The feature that sold me on this library and that I still use very very often is the multi-vowels. With this patch, you trigger a certain word with 2 to 4 vowels. The word is tempo sync to your DAW. And when you change chords, all the notes enter and change on the vowel you're currently at. Let me clarify what that means. You can have the choir sing melodically and have the chords change with the words that you are singing. Usually with these libraries, when you have a word that is being sung and you trigger a new note, you hear the word from the beginning. But in this library, the word that is being sung is where you are currently at in the total length of the word. This was absolutely mind-blowing to me when I heard the demos for this library and started using it. And I still use it very often to create choir textures that go beyond oohs and ahs. Followers of this channel will probably know that I love Cinematic Studio series maybe a little bit too much. This all started when I bought Cinematic Studio strings. I had bought a lot of string libraries over the years and I thought I was pretty well covered in that area. So when people told me I had to buy this, I just brushed it off and said I don't need another string library. Which we all don't, but also do. Ultimately, I caved and my life has never been the same. The legatos in this library are so good that they've allowed me to create dense contrapuntal lines so much easier and more convincing than any other library that I owned before. Literally from one day to the next, my string sections turned from homophonic mush or short string textures with a melody on top, that was also very hard to program, to polyphonic tapestries that breathe life and interest into the music and that sparked the hate of the YouTube comment section. I think I have said quite enough on this channel already about why Cinematic Studio strings and the orchestral counterparts, woodwinds and brass are so good. So just take my work for them, I love them to bits. I am very much an orchestral guy, but sometimes you just need a little bit more than that. I am not very good at sound design and programming synths, and fidgeting around with the software synth in Cubase is also not exactly the most inspiring process I can think of. Omnisphere for me was the first step in better synth writing. I needed to buy it because I was co-composing a game with somebody else who already owned it and we needed the library for the game. It is very easy to browse presets, load a couple of them up and start kickstart your inspiration that way, start fidgeting around with them and make the sounds your own. It is such a vast and multifaceted library with so much in it, so much versatility that I haven't even gotten to the bottom of it. But if you are an orchestral guy like me and you need something to kickstart your synth writing, I can't recommend Omnisphere more. <laughs> The 
last one on this list is the most recent addition to my template. Well, actually it's two of them because it's Metropolis Arc 1 and 2. The template that I was running was working very well for realistic orchestral stuff. But when I was making the Race to Durango remake, I noticed that I needed something that hit just a little bit harder than Cinematic Studio series. If I wanted to do the more hard hitting stuff that I heard in Thomas Bergerson's music, I needed a library that could give this aggressive and rough edge. And Metropolis Arc has provided this. I hardly use it on its own, except some with some of the low instruments that come with Metropolis Arc 2. But I often use it to layer with Cinematic Studio series to give it this aggressive edge when I need to write some aggressive music. And that's it, those five libraries changed my life. If you have a story like this with a sample library that changed your composition process from one day to the next, I would love to hear it. So let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much to my patrons for their support. This was a little bit of an easier video before we get back into weekly uploads. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Please subscribe, I would appreciate it. And leave a like and help the algorithm see you next week for yet another video. And if you like it, why don't you keep watching another one?